Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, this is the 52. If you've been listening, then you already know that. But I'm going to say it again anyway. Um, this is episode 8. 8. This is episode 8. Greg just gave me the nod. Um, we watched Thunder Force. Uh, okay, so I'm going to give the best little rundown that I possibly can. The Wikipedia page is huge like very wiki is being very inconsistent these days yes with these films because sometimes it's a little bit and then we have to fill in or it's too much and basically it's just too much we're not going to spend our whole time or like like not detailed in the wrong ways yeah like with moxie that was weird um so i'm going to do my best to give a little synopsis and if i can't do it successfully i'm going to tap greg in um but essentially it starts in march 1983 Earth was subjected to cosmic rays that gave sociopaths superpowers, resulting in a rise of supervillains known as miscreants. So no one was able to stop these people, um, except uh, there were these geneticists who uh, were trying to find a way to stop them, and they were killed, which is Emily Stanton's parents. That's Octavia uh, Spencer's character. So this is one of the main characters. So this is kind of like her Batman origin story. Um, So by 1985, she's going to school and whatever. She's basically a nerd, and she's sacrificed, like... Hey, she's not a nerd. She's just smart. Oh, yeah, that's one one of the lines. Uh, She's just smart. No, she's a textbook nerd. Um, Super nerd. Super nerd that's very obsessed with going to a good school and basically just finding a way to stop the miscreants through science. And she meets this girl, Lydia Berman, who uh, will later be played by uh, Melissa McCarthy. So she's kind of like this uh, dumb but fun friend who kind of brings a little spice into her life. Uh, They end up having a little bit of a fallout, which we'll talk about more later. So then they stop being friends, whatever, fast forward. Um, So now we're here in present day, 2024. Uh, Emily's working a is is a successful scientist and has her own company. Also, did not know the year that this happened in until you just told me that. I didn't know that either. I was spooked reading it, but I didn't want to sound like I was spooked because I'm supposed to know things. No. I think as the podcast host. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and Lydia kind of works like this dead end job. Um. So that's that's kind of what it is, and they haven't spoken since they were uh, since nineteen ninety three actually. Um, so then Lydia tries to get back. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Lydia's Octavia Spencer's. Emily tries to get back in contact with. Um, oh wait, now I'm kind of confused. I'm sorry. Emily's Octavia Spencer's mm-hmm. character and Wilson McCarthy's uh, Emily. You could just call him. Lydia and Emily. No, Octavia and Melissa. Uh, okay. Or Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy, it doesn't matter. Well, Melissa McCarthy uh, basically tries to... We were calling people fucking Tay-Tay and Uncle last episode, I think it's okay. Yeah, probably. Uh, Melissa McCarthy's character tries to get back in uh, contact with Octavia's because there's a high school reunion coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, So she does this sort of successfully... But she ends up uh, fucking some stuff up because she ends up going to her her lab to meet with her. And then she accidentally gets this serum injected into her that was meant for Octavia Spencer's character. Um, And what we later find out is that the serum was supposed to give her superpowers. uh, Super strength specifically. And because once she started the first treatment, she has to go through with all of them. So this is kind of like the hilarity ensues or whatever. Uh, and Octavia Spencer's uh, treatments look very different. She takes, like, a pill. Her uh, respective superpowers that she can turn invisible upon will. Um, okay, so basically we see a little bit of, like, their whole montages of, like, them learning how to fight, you know, learning their powers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then they get they decide to, like, okay, we're ready. We're going to fight a life of crime. Like, we're going to do it. We're going to fight the miscreants. Um, so they have their first run-in at a gas station. Uh, I think it's a gas, convenience store, a gas station? Liquor store. It's a liquor store. Um, where we actually meet Jason Bateman. Uh, he has, like, crab arms. I forgot, I think his name was Jerry, actually. Let's call him Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, and a bunch of, uh, just a group of the miscreants, and this is basically their introduction. Um, they end up, you know, saving the day, kind of. The miscreants get away. Uh, okay, so let's see. Actually, I've, I've blown through quite a bit of this uh, Wikipedia page already. Um, let's do... Let me try to see it. Or maybe I didn't. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm a little dyslexic. I'm trying. Um, so, yeah, they blow onto the scene as Thunder Force. Uh, they get the attention of the mayoral candidate, uh, the king, who we later find out is a miscreant himself. He, uh, he threatens Thunder Force. He, like, comes to Octavia's lab and is like, hey, like, you're kind of messing up my whole flow. Would you join our team? And if not, I'm going to kill you. And they're like, fuck you. We're definitely not going to do that. Um, and they le he leaves anyway. Um, let's see. Then Octavia and uh, Melissa McCarthy's characters have another fallout um, about, like, it, it was just basically they were attacked by uh, some miscreants and uh, Melissa McCarthy's character threw a buzz. We'll get into this again later, like in more depth. Um, so they have another falling out. And then to make amends, Lydia goes on a date with Mr. Krabs to get some information about uh, what's happening with the uh, race, the mayoral race. Um, so... Then, after finding out that information, uh, they go on a mission to stop him, but it was actually a little bit of a setup, because Octavia Spencer's, uh, she, this is like a knockoff Alfred, is what I would consider this woman, um, she double-crosses them, and, but they find out soon enough that, like, that she was double-crossing them, so they ended up getting out of, uh, the situation, and who ended up helping them was actually Octavia Spencer has a daughter, who, uh, we find out later has superpowers, um, that she, I guess, somehow gave herself treatments that no one knew about. She kind of has the powers like the Flash. Um, so from there on, uh, oh, the daughter's name is Tracy. Um, so then the last thing that happens after they fight the miscreants is there's this bomb that they think is going to go off. And Melissa McCarthy's character decides to sacrifice herself and jumps into the water with the bomb. Uh, but she ends up living through the entire thing. Um, yeah. And now, supposedly, it's just a happy ending. The miscreants are kind of, you know, shit out of luck. Thunder Force is full force. Their friendship is solidified. Um, and... Lydia, Lydia, which is Melissa McCarthy's character, and the crab are, like, kind of a thing. So I guess that was, like, a sort of not super succinct uh, rundown of this film. I apologize. Mine would have been longer. It would have been better, but it would have been longer for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we can get into the review part of this. Uh, I guess I'll let Gregory speak. Nah, talk about what you wrote down. I'll jump in. Um, okay, well, the first thing that I noticed with this film is that tonally it was having a lot of issues, and we, we didn't watch this together, but I did, I was with Greg when he watched it himself, and we were just kept asking ourselves, who is this film for? Um, Nobody, as far as I can tell. Yeah, there's just no demographic that I see that this film is for. It's pretty much awful, uh, but if we wanted to go in, like, kind of order... Um, one of the, the first things that I kind of had beef with this film is the dynamic between Lydia and Emily, which are the, you know, the protagonists. They kind of don't have chemistry as children. Mm -mm. We don't know why they're friends. We don't Besides know the fact that Melissa saved Octavia's character, like, when they were younger, but just from a bullying moment, it was a not bullying even, like, incident. saved her life. Although funny when she made that guy get in the dumpster and... He was like, why should I get in the dumpster? And she's like, because you're trash. Yeah, she's some funny one -liners. That was okay. Yeah. 
That that's gonna get called back to one of the critics' reviews we're gonna read later. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's funny. Um so yeah, the chemistry between the children was just all right. Um my biggest issue was actually the fallout was very anticlimactic. So the reason they stopped being friends was that um uh Octavia Spencer's character was studying for a test. AP exams. It was an AP exam. Um, so she was studying in, you know, whatever. So Melissa McCarthy's character was like, oh, you should relax, whatever. And she, uh, Octavia's, uh, Octavia Spencer's character was so tired, she was like, you should take a nap, and I'll, I'll promise I'll wake you up. So cut to, they're both sleeping in the bed. And then... The next morning. The next... Yeah, the next morning... And then Octavia Spencer's character wakes up and she's like, what the fuck? Like, you made, like, you know, we slept in and whatever. And then she was like, oh my God, I'm really sorry. Um, Melissa McCarthy's character's name is Emily, right? I don't know. I, I feel like it is. No, it's, it's fucking Lydia. Why do I keep thinking that? That's why I just keep referring to them by their name. I know, but it would be easier if we just called them Lydia. Like, I even have it in my notes. Anyway, Lydia, uh... She doesn't make a big deal about it. She's really sorry or whatever. But then they stop being friends. And you're she like... She bit the friendship bracelet off. Yeah, like over some AP test. And like, then they just walked away and never talked to each other ever again. Ever again. And then for some reason, we're supposed to believe that like all this time has passed. I mean, these women are in their mid-40s at least. You mm-hmm. Remember they say that in the movie? Um, so a ton of time has passed. And she's like, yeah, I really miss her. I'm, she's my best friend. No, she can't be your best friend if she's not being your best <laughs> no. friend. The, you talking about the security guard incident at uh, Emily's lab? Yes. Where she's like, <laughs> I guess we were. I'm her best friend, or I guess we used to be best friends, or I guess you can't really call it friends because we've been estranged for so long. But estranged seems like it's putting a little too much emphasis on that. Like, I don't know if it's really estranged. Not like restraining order, but like we haven't seen each other in a long yeah, time. Yeah, like trying we... to take her to our high school reunion. It was basically... Which happened to be at a bar? Oh, I don't... not the high school? I don't, I don't know. know what that was about. I didn't even catch the bar thing, but... But yeah, so it's, she basically describes the dynamic, because um, there just isn't one. Uh, so, so that was kind of, like, my issue. And then even the second fallout they have, um, much later in the film, was also very anticlimactic, because they got attacked, and... Uh, Lydia decided to throw a bus to try to stop these people, which really the bus was never going to do anything. I don't think she even had any aim, but she really wanted to throw the bus. And then Emily was like, see, this is the same stuff you've been doing since we were kids. You just do whatever you want to do. Without thinking. Yeah. Um, but they make her incredibly stupid. So like, who's surprised really, you know? Um, so that was, that was kind of my issue. I was like, also, man, that bus might've worked if she had some sort of aim oh also they do that thing that superhero movies often do where they change like someone's strength for the purposes of a particular scene because when she was oh there was weird power leveling throughout the entire movie yeah like she's fighting the king but i'm like but this bitch can throw a buzz (laughs) and he didn't seem particularly strong like he seemed strong compared to other humans but she's supposed to be able to lift twenty thousand pounds yeah, so it was kind of uh, a little all over the place, um, sort of like my review so far. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, also, that was weirdly like totally off is that uh, they were they would curse sometimes, but then sometimes that they wouldn't. So it was almost like crossing the line of like, okay, this is a kids film, but then we're gonna act kind of like an adult film, but the humor is childish. But so- then the king just straight up murders people. Well, see, that was like thing. pretty frequently as a gag. Yeah. Uh, so he hugged one of his henchmen to death was one of them. He kicked like the head off of a lion straight across a room into somebody else's head. They talk about murder quite a bit. She, He had the laser kill some guy right after that because he was like, I didn't get to kill somebody. So now because that was an accident, I want to kill somebody on purpose. Yeah. So and then he threatened to kill Andrew. Yeah, she threatened to kill Andrew. So there's, like, just, just weird juxtaposition between the violence and the language. So Lydia, like, she, I wrote, when she said it, she wrote, holy shit. I think she was talking about the Lamborghinis. Or yeah, what? and then she said pee crap instead. Pee crap and... Which crap is still cursing, technically. Kind of. That was Like, who gives a fuck about it, but it's still... But then she's like, 
says like things like tatas and like other really random like words. Yeah. And somehow Emily's daughter is super intelligent, but also doesn't know what tatas are or any pop culture references really besides Fortnite and boys. Yeah, it was really um, peculiar. And another thing that was that was really strange was that there were a lot of eighties uh, callbacks. Um, so, like, there was a Slayer T-shirt. There was this whole gag about Urkel. The Van Halen concert that they were that she was trying to have Emily go to like the night before her exam. Um. Yeah, but th- th- that's the weird thing because kids would never get any of those. Um, references i mean i didn't even get some of them i just knew that they were from the 80s i mean at urkel i did they were playing seal yeah what were they was that the suits was that when they yeah. were singing at the end they were singing seal yeah yeah um very strange and there was even this 80s bit where when she first meets uh when lydia first meets the crab in the liquor store there's oh, this the moment dance scene there's a dance scene it literally breaks reality and they start dancing, and it's 80s themed. Like the clothing, the music, the lighting, everything. Everything. And the then hair. Oh, her was, hair was horrible. Yeah, it was crazy. And then you're like, and then it just goes back to normal. Like, everything's normal. He even, like, walks out of the store like he didn't have some sort of romantic uh, moment with her. He did wink at her. It was just a wink, though. It was nothing. Yeah, but in comparison, they went through a dance in the 80s. And, like, I love Jason Bateman. I think he's great, but I think he's a little bit wasted here. The fact that, well, that's, that's another part of the second critic's quote. I like the claws. Oh, you did? I thought they were kind of silly. Oh, they were silly. He got bit in the balls by a fucking radioactive crab. Yeah, that's another thing we find out. Um, So, the, the miscreant lore is sort of interesting to me. Like, the concept was kind of cool. It's like, okay, people who were sociopaths are now um, super Psychopaths. Human. Yeah. Oh, psychopaths. Um, th- my issue, first of all, is that this happened in the 80s, fast forward 25 years. You're going to tell me a whole city that has no... Uh, way su- to fight back No way to them. fight back is still standing? The whole planet should basically be gone. So that made no sense to me at like all. Like ravaged. Um, so th- losing points with me for that. Also, how powerful are these miscreants that you can't just shoot them in the face? Like... The the king? Just shoot that guy in the head. Well, they didn't even know who was a miscreant, though. He was one of those low-key guys. The laser? Well, we don't... The entire Chicago police force can't kill the laser? But I don't even know how old that girl was. And she also has power leveling issues, because at some point she'll blast a hole through the side of a fucking building, and other times the blast will hit people and just kind of knock them over. Yeah, it's it's very, um... What's that word? Uh... Dumb? Well, no, dumb wasn't the word, but it is dumb. It's just convenient. It's whatever is convenient for the scene is what they all do. Uh, wait. Oh, the miscreant. So the cool thing about Jason Bateman's character is because I couldn't quite figure out why would Melissa McCarthy's character um, be interested in him if he's a, a psychopath, right? But we later find out that he's a like half miscreant. In that he got his powers um, from a crab, which is a little strange, actually, because I didn't know that it could go to animals. Now, I just thought about that. Because, yeah. The crab didn't have powers. They were just radioactive. Yeah, they were hit with something. Radioactivity. Yeah, I get that. But they shouldn't have had that. It should only happen to those miscreant people. No, it was a completely different thing. It, I don't even think it had anything to do with the cosmic rays. I think it was literally just a radioactive reef. Well, then he wasn't a miscreant at all. Exactly. He was just a crab thing. He was just a radioactive, weird, mutated person with crab arms. He had crab arms and another really peculiar... You know what my question is, though? Crab dick? Because he got bit on the balls. Are you telling me just his arms transformed? I don't know. I don't know. I was kind of, um confused about uh their interaction because um she would do things like rub butter on his on that his claws. was hilarious yeah but see i don't get it and this then, whole movie was garbage but that was so funny when she started slowly <laughs> rubbing butter on his fucking claw. she's rubbing butter but then she, he got on the staff 
because they were offering him shellfish. And he's like, why the fuck would I want to eat shellfish? Like, Mostly cannibalism? because he is a crab, but also he said that he loved shellfish before. Well, no, I understand that part. But what I'm saying is that she'll make references to eating him. She'll put, like, butter on his claw. Well, that's sexy. Is it, though? Because it looks kind of gross. Because she's still in person. Of course it looks gross. He's a fucking crab. She had pulled Old Bay out of her bra. And she said that she, was also fucking hilarious. She's like, you never She started know. seasoning him. Yeah, seasoning him before they had sex. She's like, you never know when you want to you want to season something delicious, and then I was like, wouldn't you mean hot sauce for that? Like it was a weird vibe, the Old Bay. Um, oh, because it's seafood. I know it's seafood. I'm just saying I wouldn't carry Old Bay in my bra. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of it was weird. It was just the the film was just really weird. If if you're if you're ga- uh, gathering anything from what oh, I'm saying. Oh, and then the the waiter, after offering the seafood tower and they started complaining about, like, the cannibalism, she's like, would you serve me a 32-year-old slightly overweight woman? 32 years old? Yeah, they made a lot of quips about their age. They, uh, I don't know if the Miss Green said it. They're like, they're women in their mid-40s, at least. A, it was a meeting with the king. Oh, it was a meeting with the kings? They're like, at least, though. Like... <laughs> Um, and I also just, I didn't really like Octavia Spencer's character very much. Emily, I kind of feel like she was, she was annoying. She wasn't really funny and she just didn't have a lot of zest. I don't know. I feel like most of a superhero. Yeah. yeah, Melissa McCarthy was carrying most of the weight on this film. Um, and thankfully she's so funny. Ooh, this is one thing I also wanted to bring up. I I wrote in my notes. Um, so I actually think my favorite favorite character in this film is the grandma oh that was awesome too. yeah it was pretty funny uh it was a weird weird scene um and i almost it was funny oh and almost kind of offensive <laughs> so uh emily's grandma lives in the same house that she's always lived in i guess she lives in like a not great neighborhood well just before you get into that can i just say how funny it is every time lydia says grace no. And she's always what? I didn't catch that. You didn't notice? Okay, so one the the first scene we see it is when they're teenagers, and uh, Emily's reading a book, and her grandma's like, "Yo, say grace," and she's like, "I'm reading." So Lydia's like, "Okay, I'll say grace." Oh, you mean saint like praying? Yes. Oh, oh. And she's like, "Thanks for this kick ass food. God, keep doing the most. <laughs> like, amen." <laughs> and then they're grown now and she's like i'll say grace and she's like bless the hands that made this fucking delicious food like keep doing you god amen everybody just fucking goes along with it it's great i'd fucking say grace like that like yeah I, i think that'd be pretty fun um but they're adults now and they're having dinner at her house and um She's trying to get her gram- grandma to move out to somewhere um, safer or at least stay with them at the lab. Because King just threatened their family. Yeah, King just threatened their family. Which is another really... Let me just get on this one little tangent. Um, they don't wear masks. No. So it's very... And Emily's famous. Emily's famous, like a famous scientist. She's kind of like... Yeah, she's they famous. They called her Chicago's prodigal daughter. Yeah, so uh, they're kind of drawing a lot of attention to themselves. So I almost feel like they didn't think this through for someone who's so smart it kind of didn't make any sense i mean even the first time they fought crime like at the liquor store they were kind of like well what do we do like are we gonna kill people are we gonna you know it was that was something that annoyed me but anyway back to the scene with the grandma she's they were like we gotta tell you something and she's like oh my god i have been waiting for this day for years and she's like you guys are a couple, like, you know, like you're like a lesbian couple. Dude, and then the dolls. Yeah, she like pulled. like porcelain she, wedding topper. She pulled out the porcelain wedding topper, and it was with a black woman and a white woman. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I have Michelle Obama's arms. <laughs> Saying, you know, she had some toned arms, you know. Um, And then she said, at least give it a try. Because she was like, they're like, no, we both like men. And she's like, no, give it a try. You know, especially when the city is free of miscreants, like, you guys can have a wedding. Um, it was really funny, and, uh, but also kind of like, I, I don't know how to describe this film, like, I almost hate it, 
but the fact that the, the it was such a funny scene, but also kind of it relied on this humor that's sort of dated, like the idea they're like, oh, give it a try. Like you can't give lesbianism a try. You like, have to just be gay. You just have to be gay. Like mm-hmm. you can't. <laughs> One doesn't just try. Yeah, you, you're just gay. Well, I mean, you do try, but that's because you have gay inclinations. Yeah, so it was pretty... I was like, what? You don't just try. <laughs> um, you don't just wake up one day. You're like, you know what? I might try and eat some pussy tonight. Yeah, it was so, sort of weird. And um, back to the press conference thing. The press conference, they had actually post-conversations with the king where they basically defied him because they were uh, endorsing the other candidate. But they didn't out him. No, they didn't. But that's the thing. They didn't out him. They didn't. She, she never. They never told anyone that he was a miscreant. But I was just surprised that they didn't expect him to retaliate in some way. That's what I'm saying. It was just really not thought out. And it was a really good uh, cast because we've already mentioned three people. But um, is it Bobby Can- 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 Cannaval? Who was that? He was the guy who played the king. I know who you're talking about, and I recognize him, but I have no idea what his name is. Also, I'd like to add that with 40 minutes left in their film, there had been minimal crime fighting, because I checked. It was just a lot of uh, setup with not a lot of action. I guess his name is Bobby Cannaval, or Cannavale? I don't know. He's a really good actor, and I thought yeah. he was wasted. But, eh... What have you seen him in that's, like, serious? Click on his IMDb. I mean, I see Thunder Force, obviously. Jumanji, Ant-Man, Annie, Spy. Really, The Irishman is the only one I see here that's, like, serious, and I never saw it because it was too long. Oh, that movie was good, though. He was in Paul Blart, Ferdinand. Like, he's good, but, like, in a comedic way, like the other guys. He's in Chef. He was in Chef, but we don't know how major of a character. I don't remember. I haven't Motherless seen Brooklyn was a serious movie, but I don't know if he was major there either, because he's not really in the artwork for it. He was in, on- in I, Tanya, but don't remember him there. You know what I mean? I guess so. Like, he's good, but I don't know if he's, like, Oh, he was good, in Win good. Win. That movie's really good. But anyway, that's, I just felt like there was a lot of people that in the movie that were pretty decent, and then it was just not a very good film. I couldn't figure out if the laser was Asian. They made a joke about her not looking good with short hair, and I think she may have short hair in real life. I don't think she looks good at all. I don't either. She looks kind of like an alien. Like an ant. Yeah. Mm, let's click on her. She's French. Yeah, she was kind of annoying. She was just, uh, I guess she was just supposed to be like this hot villain who was like a henchman, I guess she was Who also like really henchman. wasn't that hot? Well, no. Not to me. So, like, I don't know. Not to me. And together we both kind of cover a pretty large mm. demographic of females. Honestly, I kind of think I covered all everything in my notes. Do I have anything to add? That I hadn't brought up, I don't know. Greg laughed more than I did, I'll tell you that. Because it was so stupid. It was so stupid that I just had to. I'm not saying why you had, I was just saying you did. You know, like it was really bad. And I, also, I guess I'll tell you this, I watched it under distress. Distress? Yeah. I watched it when I really didn't want to watch it. I couldn't fall asleep for a nap. I couldn't put myself down, so I ended up... I started making some turkey patties for my meal prep, and that's when I started the film, and then when I was done with that, I brought it downstairs, and I started taking notes. And, um, I didn't enjoy myself, uh, very much at all. Especially because it's like, okay, Melissa McCarthy's humor is great, and she saved the film. Um, I could just watch a better Melissa McCarthy film. Also what one of the critics said. (laughs) Um, I just don't need to watch this one. Octavia Spencer, same thing. What what can I remember? Even though I literally saw it today. I liked that Lydia kept saying, like, this is for free, but can I have this? 
like when they stop the robbery at the the liquor slash oh, grocery yeah, store. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, you know, this is on the house, but uh, I think I deserve this pickle in a bag. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I mean, I guess you saved their lives. Take the pickle. She did something similar uh, during the press conference where she's like, selfies with us are a hundred dollars, and then. Octavia Spencer's character is like, no, uh, we don't take selfies, and if we did, they were free. She's like, okay, we can take selfies with a $100 donation. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I forgot what they stopped. Oh, it was, uh, they stopped, like, some jewelry robbers and tied them up, and the police officer was reading the note that they left, and you could tell Lydia wrote it because it sounded, like, not intelligent. But at the end, she was like, you know, we're just doing this for the city, and also maybe to throw the first pitch at the Cubs game. <laughs> yeah you know they that was one my one other critique i feel like they made lydia too stupid too dumb yeah like almost uh, it's weird because when you watch comedies you're like how grounded in reality is this and i get that it's a superhero film but within the confines of its own world like they still made her like down syndrome stupid almost also you know what didn't make sense the formula for and, and again, this, we're looking towards science in a science fiction movie, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But the formula for the super strength, right? Lydia accidentally activates the injection chamber. She gets injected. She has to keep getting injected with it or else she'll literally explode, they basically told her. Um, and she's like, yo, can't you just make more formula for yourself? And she's like, no. This took us five years to formulate. I'm like, yeah. I'm sure it took you five years to formulate. Yeah. How long did it take you to manufacture that you won't just make more? It you didn't say it took you five years to manufacture. You said it took you five years to research and develop. It didn't make any sense. And it, and it was weird, too, because they both could have had both powers, actually. Yeah, make more pills. The pills seemed real easy to make. Pill. It's pills. Yeah, they were pills. And then also the daughter somehow had her own superpowers. I don't And even... I thought that that happened. I don't think she she had it like the whole time. I'm pretty sure she did it right after she knocked out Jodie Foster, who I'm just going to call Jodie Foster cuz I don't remember her actual Jody character's Foster name. Jodie Foster definitely was not in this film. I know it wasn't Jodie Foster. I'm letting them know that. I would hope they would know that because we haven't mentioned Jodie Foster yet. That would be like a big reveal. I don't know who's even listening. Shortcoming on our part. Do we have a lot of followers? Does anyone want to listen to this weekly? Do you even know, Greg? Have you listened to the analytics? Is I any... haven't looked at the analytics because I want to keep it like fast and loose. Like we're just building. I want to know the analytics, this, Greg. And it would probably make you sad to look at it and see numbers either dwindling or like staying stagnant or whatever. So until we really take off. And we have like a thousand regular listeners. A thou- I don't know if we even have five. Oh, we definitely have more than five regular listeners. Do we listeners. really? Yeah. Okay, we should do some shout outs. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know their names. Hey, Chris. I hope you like All right, this. Hey, Rich. I know you're listening. You fucking <laughs> I hope I, hope I didn't sound bastard. stupid on here. Hope you're having a great night. Who else is listening? Ramon, maybe you're eating Taco Bell or maybe you're picking up Taco Bell on your lunch break. I can't think of any. There's some else. strangers screaming outside. I hope that doesn't get picked up on this. Oh, it did. Oh man. I can hear it. Sorry, guys. Doesn't matter. I'll probably be able to cut it out. Um, yeah, this movie was kind of just trash. Just trash. The the laser kept jumping into the back of a pickup truck. Just get in the car, lady. Oh yeah. Just get in the car. Yeah. But also, nobody could shoot her. It's Chicago. People get shot. Nobody can shoot her. They didn't have her any... powers like electricity. It's it's not first of all, it's not even a fucking laser. And the only reason I know that is because Emily's powers are disrupt disrupted by high voltage electricity, hence the taser. So the laser could shut off her invisibility. So not a laser. I thought the way they did her invisibility was kind of cool. That we could sort of see her. The special effects were okay for such a garbage movie, yeah. Yeah. No, I was just saying the way they did her invisibility was kind of... Also, somehow, Lydia threw that bus, like, seven miles into a fountain, like, on the complete edge of the city. Oh, yeah, no one got hurt. Forget nobody got hurt. Why didn't she just kick the fucking king through the wall? Well, no, that's what we're talking about, the same thing. Exactly, the convenience. And also, that bomb, too small. 
physically too small for the explosion that it caused. I don't know the science of this, but couldn't they have just thrown it in the water? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know why she had to jump with it. clearly it's heavy enough to just sink. Sink, yeah. Or also she could have thrown it into the air. The water would have absorbed the explosion better. But, like... What the fuck is going on outside, bro? Why wasn't I invited? Because I'm a sick. loser. No. Cause because I'm sick, I'm sorry. weird neighbors. Not because I'm a loser, it's because I'm sick. It's neither one of those That's things. That's what Greg said. And also, probably wouldn't want to join whatever the fuck that is, really. You don't know me. I do know you. <laughs> That's why we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I don't... The whole and, and then you know that she's not going to die. That's my other beef with that. You, is that you know... Based on the fucked up, weird, like, semi-childish tone of this movie, that she's not gonna die in that explosion. Well, no one does. They didn't even kill the king. They took him into custody. Yeah, even though she fucking flung him out of, like, the 29th floor of a building. Well, yeah. It's just that whole Batman thing. Like, we can't kill the villain. Okay, okay, but she flung him out of the 29th floor of a, fi- of a building. He's a miscreant. I don't care how screant he is. That's a hard fucking fall at a crazy velocity. I don't know. It's just, again, convenient. She didn't throw him into the water. That nigga went flying. Uh, I think Greg should read his um, review things that he wanted to read from Rotten Tomatoes. I think we're at that part of the night. Oh, the ending? Yeah. There's nothing else to talk about? I, I, from my notes, I took a couple pages, but really, I, I think I'd just be repetitive at this point. That was a lot of notes, and this movie's garbage. It's just so the tone really is really it. off. Uh, I'm sorry. Thunder Force. Also horribly rated across, like, almost every platform. Rotten Tomatoes, 21 critic score, 22 audience See, score. Yeah. IMDb, for some reason, 4.4. 4. IMDb always has a little bit higher, though. It's a big database. Shout out Taylor Mosby and Ben Falcone, though. I don't know them, but... Hey. Taylor was the daughter and Ben was Kenny. I just like their portrayals. Oh. Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. So, hold on. It's just the critics' consensus. It says it's got a few chuckles, but Thunder Force is largely a superhero comedy that's neither exciting nor funny and an egregious waste of its co-star's talents. And then the audience says, With a boring story and a low laugh-to-joke ratio, Thunder Force is likely to leave you wishing you'd watched any of the talented cast members' numerous better films. Yeah, that's basically how I felt, so... Yep. Um, Rate it. (laughs) <laughs> rate this on a scale of a 10 uh for reference it's like a 2 on rot- 20 something on Rotten Tomatoes right mm-hmm. 21 I think that's fair 2.1 yeah something like that maybe maybe 3 on the best day if I was high 3 well Greg had a theory Sober. that it was a stoner comedy not necessarily that it's a stoner comedy but it, it has, like, maybe the calling of it. Like, the fact that they're referencing 80s stuff. Or at least drunk, because, like, Lydia's drinking the whole Are time. Are there drunk films? I don't know if there are any films that I want to watch while I'm drunk. You don't watch movies when you're drunk. I don't know. You're not an alcoholic. Neither am I. But, like, I'm sure there are some people that watch movies while they're I drinking. I guess there are some people. You used to have a glass of wine with Game of Thrones. I don't know. I never did that. I did. Oh, um, yeah, 2.3. 2. Okay, I guess we're in uh, agreeance here. Don't watch it, really. Yeah. I don't. wouldn't even recommend you to watch this. Uh, this and I'm sorry if this rev- our uh, synopsis was like a mess, or my synopsis, rather. It was a, basically... But I, apparently was, no one's listening. I didn't say that. <laughs> the movie's not worth watching. It, it really isn't. I don't know why it's still, like, within some of the top movies being watched recently on netflix i don't know who's promoting that or if netflix really just lies about it to get you to watch it under the understanding that it's a popular movie but not good and don't watch it and apparently a block party just started so with that being said in like five minutes we're gonna smoke and do our first under the influence episode about bad trip so which i may or may not have more to say about and also, probably a few tangents, because we'll be smacked. 
I'm not that intelligent. I'm sorry. <laughs> Catch you guys later. Bye.